Hey guys, it's Kudasai coming at you with more interactive horror stories. Now we already read so far the doll and after funeral, so we're gonna get right on with Crystal Skull. You are a king who is loved by his people. You have a serious problem though. Your only child, Juliana, has an incurable disease and she is dying. You hear about a crystal skull which can cure illnesses and let people have visions. It is brought to you your it is brought to your palace from the continent of America. Uh I don't think America's a continent. I meant North America, but... America? Oh, okay, whatever. But your man warns you that the skull might be cursed. Will the crystal skull bring health to the princess? Or doom? I don't know if I'm... I'm, re I'm really tempted to read this in like a British accent just to, to set the mood. But... I mean, my British accent skills are a bit rusty. Oh, you know what? You know what? If I feel it necessary, then I'll do it. But for now, we're just gonna get right into it. So, the crystal skull. Or... Wait, how do you say this in British? Or, how do you say this in British? Yes, of course, British is a language of its own, as everyone knows. The crystal skull- I can't, I, I can't. I can't, I can't do it, guys! Anyway. Bing! <laughs> I should just, like... Yeah, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this part in, like, the worst British accent possible. Being a king is hard. Being a good king is even harder. <laughs> you know this- You know this well as the soul- So- ruler of a European kingdom in the age when America is discovered. Yes, because I came from Europe, and Europe is where I was born, and that is why I have this accent. Because I inherited it from my British ancestors. Anyway, it has been 25 years since you ascended the throne. Your subjects are content with your rule and your country is in peace and the people are wealthy. But there is something wrong with your life. That's pretty good. I gotta say. Your daughter, Juliana, is ill. You know it. You know, I'm, I'm no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not gonna do it. That's it's a little too excessive. To all my British viewers who may be watching this in the future, I apologize if I'm butchering your accent. I mean, I did go to the UK at one point, but I didn't really get the accent. You know what? I'm. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna do it anyway. Just. Just. Okay. I'm. I'm ah, okay. I'm gonna do it. She's only 18 years old, and she has got an illness that nobody could cure yet. Princess is dying and she is your only child and heir to the throne. Every doctor you could find tried to cure her. You have tried almost, almost everything. Almost! Oh my gosh. Alright. You have been informed about a miraculous artifact unearthed in the continent of America. It is a human skull made of crystal. Again, America isn't a continent in itself. It is a nation. America is a continent if you add a north in front of America, or South America, or Central America, I think. I don't know my geography that well, but we will just go with that. Anyway, moving on. It is a human skull made of crystal. Interesting. It amazes the, amazes the scholars, because no method is known to carve up such an excellent shape of a skull out of crystal. The skull doesn't belong to the world that you know, but to an ancient civilization that has been lost. But what amazes the scholars is not just the impossible creation. What creation, I might ask? I do not know. I know not. The skull is told to bring miracles to whom touches it with their bare hands. Some people tell that they saw visions from the future. Some tell that they saw how the human race has originated from a zygote, if I must, if I do declare. I, for I actually know. I forgot what it was called, but... All humans actually originated from this single-celled organism from billion, not billions, maybe billions of years ago, millions? I, I, one of those, I completely forgot. But we all started as a single cell. FYI. Uh, and some tell that the skull can cure their illnesses. Those couldn't be cured with the medication available to your era. Naturally, you ordered your best men to bring the miraculous skull to the palace. It's midnight now. You are in Juliana's chamber. She's lying in her bed, holding your hand as you sit by her bed. No candles are lit inside. Full moon enlightens the princess's chamber, shining on her long blonde hair and blue eyes. She is beautiful, I say! She is too weak. Her skin is pale. She has under eye bags, showing her illness. You already suffered the loss of your wife ten years ago. Now you can't stand seeing your only daughter slowly die. Oh no, it's the boop! It's the bubonic plague all over again! Oh, woe is me! Anyway. Juliana asks you with a soft voice. Father, am I going to die? I won't allow that! Eventually, yes. <laughs> eventually. Eventually, yes, my daughter. Yes. 
You will, in time. It is our fate to die. All humans have a dying point. I won't allow that! No, I will defy reality! I will defy it with all my willpower! She smiles. I know, father. You are a mighty king. I know that you will do the best by your subjects and me. Oh! The door of the chamber is knocked on. The servants generally don't disturb the royal family members at night, so it must be something important. The door... Oh, no, no. Okay, oh, sorry. Come in! A brunette boy, one of your servants, gets inside the chamber with politeness. He looks at you and says, Your Majesty, the artifact has been brought. You have been want waiting for this the moment for this moment for a long time. Go to the artifact or kiss Juliana's forehead. I will come back. I am a loving father, of course, so I will come back for you. My love. Anyway, after you kiss Juliana's forehead and say, I will come back, she brings your hand to her pale lips and kiss it. Then you leave Juliana alone in her chamber. Oh no, well, that's already a bad sign in itself. At the exit of Juliana's chamber, you see Sir William, one of the knights those were appointed with the task of bringing the ancient skull. He is a strong man with black hair and a round beard. He wears gloves and holds a bag. Your majesty, he says, and kneels before you. Signal him to stand up, let's go to my study chamber. Okay, that's the only choice I've got, so... Oh my gosh, okay. Sir William follows you as you walk to your study chamber. The chamber is well lit with, a sil with silver candelabrums, all the furniture are classy. It is a king's study room, after all. There is only one chair. It is for you. You sit on it. Sir William stands by you and slowly pulls the artifact from his bag. You push the books on the study desk to open space for the artifact. Here it is, he says, and gently puts the crystal skull on the study desk. The skull is truly a, mas a masterpiece if it is crafted by humans. All the details of a human skull are imprinted with care on raw crystal. Lights coming from the candles are refracted inside the chrys crystal. Chrysal, gaining various colours of a rainbow. It's magnificent, but you sense something sinister. Something that doesn't belong to our world. Touch the skull! Obviously! The first thing that we do when we come across an ancient artifact that is probably possessed by something is to touch it. That is our first reaction. That is the first thing that comes to my mind. Or did you knights touch the skull? No, why would I care? Who cares about them touching the skull? It's all about me! It's all about me! I am the king! Anyway. As you are about to touch the skull, Sir William holds your hand and prevents you from touching the skull. Your Majesty, I think I need to tell you something about the skull before you touch it. Alright. The day we were about to leave, a native man came to us. He looked like the chief of his tribe. He knew little of our language, but he shouted some words that we could not understand. Cursed! No touch! So we haven't touched the skull with our bare hands again. Who cares? I am the king! I am the king of this land. It is my job to touch things that other people wouldn't normally touch because I must be the first. I must be. That is the only way I will have it. I must be the first to touch it no matter what happens. Even if it kills me. I must touch me. Touch. So pretty. Anyway. I know that our princess needs to find a cure. I also know that we've received reliable information about the magical powers of the skull when it comes to incurable diseases. But your majesty, I have got a very bad feeling about the skull. I believe that the wise decision is to throw the skull to the sea. I can't, I can't let Juliana die. She will touch the skull. I trust your insight. Let's do it. Uh, first of all, first of all, how do we know that this skull is actually a miracle cure? How do we know this for certain? Um... Might I ask, is this really going to work? Or is this actually going to kill my daughter in the end? I, I don't know. I, why would I just... Why would I just throw it out? We brought it here for a reason. We must carry out this reason. The knight sighs. As you wish, your majesty. But if you're going to bring the skull to her, I wish you would wear gloves. Touch it with bare hands. I'll touch it with my bare hands. Or wear gloves. Well, I mean, safety first, obviously. This is something that's probably probably full of diseases and infections. You don't know who touched the skull before you. You don't know where the skull has been. You don't know how much bacteria has accumulated on this thing. Probably, like, tons. Wear gloves. Obviously. You look for gloves around the study chamber. 
Sir William pulls his own gloves off. I think you wish Juliana to touch the skull as soon as possible. Let's not wait for servants to find your gloves, he says and gives you them. You wear the gloves and hold the crystal skull with your covered hands. Let me bring the skull to Juliana. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. This is definitely not going to kill her. You thank Sir William for his services and let him go. You carry the skull to Juliana's chamber. You enter her chamber and see that she hasn't slept yet. She rises up and sits on her bed. She looks at the skull in awe. It looks marvellous and scary, she says. You approach Juliana and let her touch the skull. And she dies. As Juliana touches the skull, she closes her eyes and doesn't react to anything in external world. You understand that she is having a vision. Oh yeah, I forgot. It, it gives you visions. I completely forgot about that. Okay. After 10 seconds, she opens her eyes with a gasp. <gasps> I saw things. I don't know. Actually, no. I need to give her like a, a more a more princessy voice. Okay, let's let's try this again. Let's try this again. I saw things. I don't know how to describe them. They were pitch black creatures, so ugly. Their eyes they were red as flames, and they all stared at me. She starts to cry. Please keep this thing away from me, please. And I want to be alone. So you decide to keep the skull in your study room and let your daughter sleep. Oh no! Whatever will I do about this? Oh my goodness, my voice. My voice is gonna die after this. After this- the <clears throat> Anyway, after this tiring day, you go to your chamber. There are no guards at the door. You just- you just trust everybody in the palace. You are a loved- Ooh, Um. Uh. Okay. Okay. Whatever you say. No doors in the palace. That is very, very secure. Clearly- I trust even the enemies who are going to one day break into my castle and murder me in my sleep. Who needs doors? Who needs doors in this era anyway? We can all trust each other. This is 2020. Everyone can be trusted. Right? Right. Right. There will be no argument about that. It is just a given. It is a fact. It is truth. D don't. Except you can't trust your next door neighbor. Don't trust them. You can trust everybody else except your next door neighbor because you never know what weird things that they're up to in the middle of the night. Anyway. Examine myself or sleep. Between these two options, why would I examine myself in the first place? I'm gonna do it anyway just because I'm a narcissistic boop. I am a narcissistic boop, yes. You take pride in how you look. You are a middle-aged man, but you still look as handsome as you were young. Your looks are an important factor that makes you a charismatic leader, besides being fair and wise. Okay, well that did absolutely nothing except boost my already overinflated ego, so I guess I'm just gonna sleep. You wear your nightgown and get in your bed. It is a bed for two people, but you haven't slept with anyone since your wife passed away. I mean, why would I? I'm not that kind of king. I, uh, at least I hope I'm not. You have a secret that you keep from everyone. Uh, sometimes you hug the second pillow in your bed as if it was someone you love. You do this since your childhood. Nobody needs to know it. It doesn't take long for you to fall asleep. Uh, am I having- am, do I hug a- do I have a body pillow? I'm pretty sure that's a body pillow that I'm hugging. Alright. Father! You wake up to Juliana's voice. She gently holds your shoulder. You look at her. She has a happy smile on her face. Her skin is not pale, but saturated with life. She no longer has bags under her eyes. I feel wonderful! Wait, wait, hold on. I feel wonderful! I- oh my gosh. I cannot do a high voice, I'm sorry. If you expect me to have a high voice, it's not gonna work. I feel wonderful! Okay, whatever. That's the best I got. She takes a few steps back and starts dancing. You laugh with happiness, stand up, and hug her. Oh, she's cured! Oh, well that vision did wonders for her. Juliana walks in the corridors of the palace, dancing and laughing. You and the people of the palace are very happy to see her this way. She used to be like a ghost before. You plan a feast and invite all the lords of the kingdom. A few days later, every lord arrives to the capital city to celebrate the health of the princess. Alright, so she's not gonna die? Question mark? At the feast, Juliana is the center of everybody's attention. Oh, wow. What a self centered, conceited king am I? And princess, she is, whatever. She talks with everyone joyfully, makes jokes, makes people laugh. Oh. When the feast is over and it's midnight, everybody goes to the chambers reserved for them. You accompany Juliana to her chamber, you put a kiss on her forehead before letting her sleep. Then you go to your own chamber and fall asleep in peace. Alright, alright. <laughs> alright, alright, nothing bad here! Okay! You wake up to the sound of the knocking on your chamber's door. It's still night. You wonder who dared to wake you up at this hour. 
Open the door or ignore. Hey, I'm sleeping here! No, wait, how do you do a New York accent? Hey, I'm sleeping here! Okay, that's good enough. Ignore! You can't sleep. You feel something is wrong. So wrong! Alright. Oh! Ah, uh, the door of your chamber opens. There is only one person who is allowed to enter without knocking on the king's door. Juliana? So you understand that it's Juliana who entered. Like you guessed, you see your daughter's silhouette. She closes the door and approaches you with a smile on her face. Oh, that's not a good smile. If I- that's- that's a bad smile if I ever saw one. The door of your chamber opens. There's only- oh wait. Juliana? Sorry, I keep- I keep thinking I click. And it didn't click. Juliana? She leans down to- she's gonna kill me. I, I'm pretty sure she's gonna kill me. She leans down to you, gently pulls the other pillow that you don't use. Juliana is dead! Wait, hold on. Juliana is dead! She says, pushing the pillow on your face. Wait, what? You struggle, but whoever or whatever is trying to kill you is too strong. The king is dead! Long live the king! She shouts. What? That, you just contradicted yourself, Juliana! Why is your own daughter committing pa patricide, regicide, and referring herself as king rather than queen? That doesn't make sense at all! That is the end of your reign and life. Oh, wow. Okay, the end. The end. There are- whoa, there are three endings? Oh, wow, there are three endings on this one. The previous two only had two endings, but... Um, okay. Okay, so I had a strange feeling from the very beginning as soon as she touched that skull. I knew it was a bad idea. I knew it. I saw it coming. I called it. That skull was just a big no-no all around. It was completely not worth touching it. It killed me. I knew somebody was going to die from this. This is why it's called horror stories, because you die. Obviously, this crystal skull was a bad omen. You don't touch things that existed for thousands of years before you because they, like, for all I know, they are imbued with some sort of strange, demonic, paranormal, supernatural, extraterrestrial energy that is going to kill you at one- at some point or another. Like, you just don't do that. Who would do that in the first place besides teenagers on, like, teenagers on TV? You know those teenagers from the 80s or the 90s or whatever who don't know what they're doing because they're too- too ignorant? They think that everything that they do is right, when in reality they're just wrong. Everything that they do is wrong. Everything in the story is wrong. The doll is wrong. The, the after the funeral is wrong. The crystal skull is wrong. Everything is wrong. But, that's just my opinion. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. You guys can decide whatever you want about this. This was a good horror story. It had a quite a few interesting details. I think the whole thing was just interesting as a whole. But I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. I'm gonna get to Evil Beneath the Ground in the next video. Then we also have four more. Crystal Skull 2. Oh, there's a part two. Oh, okay. Madness in Infinite Loop. Aweeja! And credits. Oh, jeez. I am so looking forward to the credits. That is gonna be the best story. It's gonna be the best. I'm so looking forward to that. Oh, yes, the credit! Hey. Uh, anyway, so, if you enjoyed this video, I hope that you give me a like, leave me a comment down below, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. I will, again, put a link down in the description if you want to play this quote-unquote game for yourself. But, in the meantime, thank you guys so much for joining me on this interactive horror story experience, and don't forget to stay tuned for the next video. I will see you then!